I have some excellent in-studio guests for you guys. Andrew Keegan, who used to be on 7th Heaven, and uh, dated Jessica Biel on 7th Heaven. That's I don't know if it happened in real life, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and he was also in 10 Things I Hate About You. And uh, Brian Unger, uh, who was on The Daily Show and also um, on NPR, uh, among mm -hmm. many other things. Mm -hmm. So uh, now they're part of a play called He Asked For It. Uh, it's at the Matcha Theater here in Los Angeles. And... Uh, it's uh, got one last weekend, I believe, Thursday through Sunday here, and you could find tickets at heaskedforit.com. But we'll get to that in a second. First, uh, welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you, Jenk, for having us. Uh, all right, uh, Andrew. Uh, let's start with the first question. Uh, did you ever date Jessica Biel in real life? Did I ever date? Uh, no, we we knew each other before we actually did the show, and um, I can't say that we. We didn't date. We, we definitely uh, hung out a lot of times with a group of friends and sort of... Uh, Let's just... She did get a face full of Sprite. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> started, I mean, it started you, off like this. Oh, all right. I, <laughs> I think now is a good time to just get that stuff out. Uh, fair, fair enough. Um, so because the way you answered it kind of sounded like a yes. It, you know, we, we work together, and um, so it's a, this, you know, it's a very professional uh, This continues to be a yes. <laughs> this continues to be a yes. All right, that's fantastic. Now, funny enough in the play you're playing uh someone who is not straight um we're not straight in, in the in the play Would jank we i this is just coming as a surprise to us we we were told this would be a revival of annie and um and when we're we, gonna play annie well i was doing daddy warbucks and uh he was just orphan number 21 and it wasn't until we got on stage and andrew asked me to <clears throat> blow him that Wait, the play it, turned you know, up. Can we say these? Can we say those yes. kinds of things? Are right. well, Annie took on a help. different complexion, and so we're committed to it because it's our craft. It's it's a uh, it's a slice of life story in West Hollywood um, about uh, a, a few characters, and, and I play a character that's HIV positive, and there's another character that's HIV positive. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm with you on the Annie thing, but I'm just thinking that we should probably get a little bit of the story out there. You know, the, the real he asked for it. If you want to put lipstick on the pig, Andrew, go right ahead. But which one would be the pig? I'm, um, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that we're both predators in the play. And then, and and I'm the I'm the only one in the play who doesn't have HIV, but all the characters in it do, and all of them are. Um, sort of um, lying to one another to get what everybody wants, you know, intimacy and love and to find that one special person. And so the themes are very universal and they're not just gay, but um, we do feel like we were tricked. <laughs> well, Brian, let me ask you about that because, um, you know, uh, there is a, a conception out there that uh, that the gay community uh, maybe has a harder time finding love because there's so many guys who are just interested in sex instead. Is that part of the play, or is that something uh, you know that is tackled in this? Is it? And do you think it's true? Uh, I can't speak for the gay community, and I can't speak for specifically the one in West Hollywood. But the themes in the um, play do address this notion that people are always lying to one another essentially to get laid um, mainly guys though right <laughs> yeah well these are these are all guys lying to one another um, mainly through um, chat rooms and through the internet portraying themselves as people they aren't in order to 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 basically hook up and in this case uh, when you add a, a, a potentially deadly disease into that game it can becomes very it becomes fatal now I know you guys are actors and and is there anybody straight in the play first of all I'm sorry is there anybody gay in the play that's actually you know one you know of the actors? we've left it all outside we I don't think any of us has addressed that and, it, and it's interesting I mean we're all basically gay on stage but none of us has really talked that that it just seemed inappropriate. Really? None of you? None of, none of us has really... How long have you been doing the play? Weeks. Weeks. Month and a half. Weeks. And no one asked one another, hey, by the way, as we're making out, are you actually gay or no? Um, I think that we've treated it, you know, it's a it's a professional situation, and I think we're, we're artists and we're kind of entering into this with our intentions. And to be honest, when I read it initially, it was just so well written that you didn't really feel like it was, you know, 
about that necessarily. I mean, the characters, and as actors, that's what we do. We jump into different roles. And so that being sort of something, I'm straight. And so it was a challenge. It was a, um, any time I get scared, it's like, that's great. That's something that I should have to get myself, or should get into and get and get through. So um, we're, I mean, we're having a great time. And I think we just sort of do the Well, work. let's put it out there. I mean, I do get to squeeze your ass nightly. And... Um, do you guys make out at all or no? We don't get to make out because I don't do that. Uh-huh. I just, you know, I just want to. Oh, I, yeah, I got I, you. I, I, but I don't, I don't, you want to constantly I don't allow the kissing. You don't I, don't, I don't kiss. Yeah. Um, that's very interesting. But that's not to say we didn't giggle, you know, for, you know, what, 30 consecutive nights of rehearsals. Uh-huh. Through, through, I mean, because it's like we're a bunch of guys who are, no matter who it is, you're awkwardly assuming an intimate you know, posture and you're touching and you're doing things and it, it is, so you have to kind of rise above all of what's happening and sort of think about the script and the craft and I hate to sound cliche, but it really does come down to that. I called it the third rail though. I, I did, it's so hard to not make the wise crack when Andrew is boning a dude against a car door, for instance, and you that get happens to, in the blood. You do get to see that. Are you really putting that that that, that storyline? We've there? got to get people into this theater somehow, Andrew. And the play is called "He Asked For." By the way, you can get tickets at heasked I, I, I feel like I should defend that last one. The the, the play's done. It's really well. Uh, the production's done really well, and, and the whole story is is actually quite amazing. And people really do leave the theater quite imp like quite uh, affected. Um, I know we're having a, a few jokes with it all, but I think that uh, there's a really important, you know, story here about people being lost, being desperate, trying to find love in a, in a city like L.A. And um, it's just it, it's so well put together, and, and it's also hilarious. It. Mm -hmm. it is one of the funniest scripts I I think I I I ever my agent ever sent to me, and I was like, this is the most tragic, hilarious thing I've ever read. Is the writer there all the time to kind of guide you guys through what it's supposed to be like? Do you see what I'm saying? I don't because I've never been in a play, so I don't know we had the dynamics of this it. Is, yeah. This is our, both of our, the others First are course. a little more seasoned than we are in terms of doing plays, but Andrew and I have never done a play, and Eric Patterson, the playwright, who's a really talented guy, was there at rehearsals, and I, I wanted to strangle him, I don't know about you, a couple of nights, you'd ask him, what did you mean when you wrote this, and how should this be played, and he would just say, however you want to play it. I can't. And I, can't. I, and I, I just. It was like, you know. I can't wait to see the next time you guys bump into each other. But I, 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 well, really, I'm sure. I, I wanted to throttle him because, of course, he has an idea of how it should be played. He hears right. the voices in his head. But he, he really wanted to stay out of our, our way in terms of how but we interpreted. I think, this. but I, I actually, I actually appreciate that about it because I think that he did put put these, you know, put this framework together. But as actors, we come in with, you know, we see different things, and I think we've actually opened up his mind to different intentions that he may not even have meant you know these are these are words on on a page but we're telling a story and we're bringing you know we're bringing our stories to this as well you know Andrew let me ask you a general question about that before I get back to the play you know I, I always wonder in movies and I haven't really been involved in any movie making in a real way how much of it uh, of a movie in general or TV <laughs> show that, like you were involved in seventh heaven among other things um, is the actors and how much is the script are you supposed to follow the script religiously or do actors often go off the script that's a really great question and actually I, I, there's kind of two answers a show like seventh heaven they were very specific I mean you changed a word it had to go through the line all the way up and Brenda Hampton the creator of the show would have to approve something independent films and I, I'm shooting something right now and it's sometimes you can kind of the the writing is intended to be sort of loose and you can kind of add and you know ad lib and do those kinds of things but then a play I mean we're supposed to literally get every word and and in a play like this there's a lot of sort of words and, and, and it's written in a way that's you know one character says one thing and it bounces back and forth so it's actually you know uh, uh, the most complicated kind of um, material to work with but we've you know and when we're on stage whatever happens happens you know and we've we've had those experiences as well you know I always wonder about that too in the plays do people forget lines sometimes uh, oh do they and then what how do you react if someone's forgotten their line do you just like pretend they said it you know uh, apparently this has happened a number of times we, 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 we had a we had a moment in fact the only line that I think I've forgotten on the whole run and it just happened to be a pretty important Andrew one. Andrew Andrew forgot we perhaps should, we, the most critical 
line yeah, of the play. But I'm not going to say anything about it. But but what you do is you 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 look into the eyes of the actor across from you, and you get a sense of a terror coming from them, <laughs> and, and 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 you you can see where they it's like a train has mentally jumped the tracks, and you want to reach out and say I, I can help you through this, but you can't because everyone is watching you. So then you wait, and so then there's a pause. <laughs> And the audience thinks it's a dramatic effect, right? Right. And I you, do that on the radio. All you time. have there basically you have a moment of prayer where you just hope that your fellow actor is going to remember the line, or you just jump forward and move the scene forward. You just skip ahead, and the audience has no idea that you've dropped three or four pages. Yeah, well, <laughs> we we dropped <laughs> we a do. few lines, no pages. No, we, I I actually had a, a, the unfortunate experience of of coming down and sort of missing a step, and I had a, a, a beer in my hand and or. A, water in a beer bottle and um sort of had to recover and got through it so you just feel the pressure and you know you have to do it just like right now we have to finish this show right we can't, i can't just get up and you know go get a drink oh, well some have so <laughs> dick morris walked off once so it's really? possible he did. so now he's uh, a humorless man he is he's a very humorless man so now i'm gonna ask you my mom's question okay uh, my mom believes that if you're a really good actor uh, and you play something very convincingly that you are that person so, mm. like, she believes that Larry Hagman is one of the most evil men in, alive, yep. based on J.R. Ewing from back in the day. Okay. Yep. So do you get a lot of people thinking, oh, well, Andrew's got to be gay? Um, I've never, re I've never f felt that, uh, that that's ever, you know, sort of been an issue at all. I mean, I'm in a world like L.A., and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm really comfortable with myself. I, you know, I don't really feel that it's sort of... Like, no one comes up to you after the play and thinks, like... Oh well, you know, you did such a good job. So you know you what? It, you, you, the play is so it's so deep in sort of the emotional sort of the, the character's emotional state that it, there are looks of shock, but it has more to do with the story and the and it's not about sexuality. It's about a, emotional an emotional trip. Right. You know? And the play, by the way, is he asked for it. It's at the Matcha Theater. <clears throat> it's uh, this Thursday and Sunday. You can uh, check it out, and then maybe it moves to Broadway. We'll see. Yeah, um, that'd be great. Uh, so Andrew. Um, uh, the second part of that question is, what do you think? Does that help your career uh, these days in Hollywood? Because back in the day, you know, anything related to gayness was, you know, career killer. Now it seems like a lot of straight actors want to play gay characters. Does it's, that help? It's a great question because it's actually a theme throughout the play, um, being that it's about L.A., it's about actors, it's about Hollywood. In fact, Brian plays an agent and um, deals with this exact subject. Um, for me, you know, as an actor, as a, as a creative, you know, being, I'm looking at things for, for the value of what I'm going to be able to, you know, gain from it uh, creatively, and that's what we're, we're doing. We're, you know, we're sort of exercising our acting muscles, and it's a, it's a totally different, uh, different experience that I've never had before. So to tell a whole story for two hours is, is an incredible feat. And especially when you're dealing with things that are just so much more than what you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, but, are, but, oof, but heavy. But so that helps you as an actor. But when they look at your resume, you think that helps or hurts? I don't see how it it doesn't help. I mean, you know, uh, it seems like if you want a professional actor, somebody who's able to do something like a play would be uh, as, you know, would be considered professional. Yeah, I, agree. I, I, I mean, the I, line in the play that I say is, "Gay guys don't become movie stars, not the ones who are out of the closet," and that's just the way it works. Right, but you of can, course. you can, in the community, I think you can sort of have sex with whomever you want. But I think when you wind up on the cover of People magazine saying I'm gay, then it becomes a bigger issue, and it sort of becomes a public issue. And the way, you know, to the rest of the country and to, to places like where I grew up in Ohio, it's still a very unconventional, controversial lifestyle. And you can't expect people to go like, hey, it's cool. You know, it's just, that's just not the way it is. Uh, Brian, I know that the play tackles these issues. So let me, I mean, how do they keep it secret? Because, you know, you hear rumors if you live in L.A. that every, like, 80% of actors are gay, right? <laughs> but yet you only see, like, two or three that are openly gay. Yeah. How do, and in this... You know, TMZ-filled world where everything is recorded, and how do they keep it secret? Um, what I do is uh, <laughs> when when someone's outside my hotel room looking through the people recording me, I make sure that I have uh, someone from ESPN in the room as well. Uh, that's a good. That's a good way. No, to go. I I don't know. I mean, I I think like everything in Hollywood, it's overstated. I think that there is more sort of lore around these sort of taboo subjects than really exists. 
I think that it's a discreet town. It's one based on mutual respect and discretions because that is there's a code about respecting people's privacy because it is a very small community and your ability to work is based on those relationships that they're healthy, that people trust you, that you protect your friends. I think so. Um, and it's still not cool for the press to go around, you know, outing people. That's just not cool, you know. It's right. like to each and unto themselves, you know. So oh, that's interesting. I don't know. I, I didn't mean, think I, the press had any boundaries of coolness left. I, I, but. um, in Hollywood, you know what? In Hollywood, the press is basically uh, like pushing product, and they're 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 putting press releases on TV, and they're much like Meet the Press. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that's you know, true. No, no question about that. That's but very I mean, similar. But I mean, they're very similar industries, and Hollywood and Washington um, are are very, very similar in that there is an internal code of conduct, and outside of those businesses, outside of politics, outside of Hollywood, there's a separate code of conduct where appearances and perceptions are very, very key and important. Um, and when you break the internal code, like go into a bathroom in Minnesota, Minneapolis, and tap your foot in a stall and try to hook up with a dude, you've broken a code, you know, and that you will be punished. And in Hollywood, you know, you're punished for for something similar, I suppose, <clears throat> if, if, if it's, if you know, if, right. it, if it doesn't look discreet. But I don't know. Uh, all right. On that, uh, on that topic, last question, and then we've got to uh, wrap it up, is... Um, uh, paparazzi, they ever bother you, Andrew, or is it, do you have a nightmare story, or mm, um, when you they know, caught I, I you think one night with Jessica? No. Yeah, the, oh, did you see that video? <laughs> I, oh, not man, yet. I don't know but how that I'm gonna do have it. a little paparazzi thing you taught me though. Oh, when which? we were having a drink, and we walked out of the bar, mm -hmm. and someone took your picture. It was like Andrew Keegan with guy, mm -hmm. just with friend or whatever. That was me. But you said. You told me that you you shake their hand and talk to oh, them so they can't take your picture. Sometimes, you know, you just before they and that was a one time situation. Just ran up with a guy before he got his camera. Hey, man, good to see you. And then by the time he says anything, he's oh, we're gone. That's one way to go. But you know what? I think you know. Obviously, that the TMZ situation is it's become this heckling thing, and it's 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 obnoxious. But um, at the same time, obviously, it, it sort of is part of this whole thing so it is what it is of, and you gotta live with I don't it. live in the town I, we, I live outside the town so that I don't have to go to those restaurants and where do you places. live again I'm down on the west side I'm just gonna generalize that <laughs> <Right on. laughs> all right we'll leave it right there the play is called he asked for it uh, it's if you want to get tickets for Thursday through Sunday uh, this weekend uh, it's at he asked for it com. it's at the matcha theater and Brian Unger Andrew Keegan thanks so much for joining us on the Young Turks really Jim, thank you so much thank for having you. us